Hello. Uh, hi there. Um, may I speak to Derek, please? Yes, this is me. Hi, Derek. My name's Davy Lane. I'm just calling for a little chat. Hello, Davy. Uh, what's it like you, you'd like to talk about? Your feelings? Oh, well, where does one start? I was actually hoping I could talk about some of your feelings, having listened to oh, your... Excellent. All right. Would that be all right? Yeah, that's, that's great. When you just said chat, I thought... Okay. Okay, good. Well, yeah, well, yeah. I wasn't going to go as broad as that, but yeah. is that okay if I maybe um, ask you about your new solo record? Yes, it would be an honour. Great. It would be an offer. I will gladly accept both the honour and um, accept the offer. It's honour. It, see, Davey, it's honour and offer. Well, I'll gladly accept the offer and... Um, yeah, honour and offer, if you say them like that. Ah, honour and offer. Ah, uh, I got you, got you, okie dokie. I'm a little slow on the uptake today, I've not had my... Um... No problem. You've been, uh, you've been playing your trade in the world of rock and roll since the mid-60s. I just, why wait 50 years to uh, release your first solo record? Well, um, first, it's, it, it's my first full-length excursion. Uh, I had a, uh, a um, I think it was five-track, uh, what we called a super demo, which came out only on eight track, which was uh, a, a, probably a wrong bet on my part. Which was called "It's a Small's World." That was in the seventies and the seventies. Then I've been, you know, when when tap would tap is like a a breathing thing. It inhales and starts up again, and then exhales, and disappears. Yeah. And and when it would do that, I would just. Uh, put put away the bass and and pursue other. Oh, I, well, one, at one time I joined another band. I joined a Christian rock band. Uh, Lamb's, Lamb's Blood. Blood. Yep, yep. Yes, had a had a uh, hit that charted on the Christian charts called Whole Lot of Lord. Um, ah, right. Other times I pursue, I pursue other things. Uh, you know, I'm a man of of parts, as they say. Yeah. So I would go off to do uh, I do. Uh, some adverts, uh, some jingle writing in uh, the Netherlands, and then I, I kind of caught on in the Netherlands and became a, a host on a competition uh, show called Rock Stars with a Z. Went over to Latvia uh, for a while. Things things uh, were strange over there. I ended up uh, being a male dancer in a club called PK Hunkington's. How does how does one you know like if you're a bass player by trade? Yeah, I worked on my physique a bit. Okay. And, uh, you know, the, it's it, it, after all, it's Latvia. It's not that they're not like flooded with applicants. Yeah. In Latvia. Yeah. Uh, particular job. Um, so w- what I'm saying is that I've always occupied myself. Never was on the dole yep. or anything like that. But. Uh, and it seemed like a, a solo record was was beyond my particular pale. And then uh, the British Fund for Aging Rockers came along and filled my pale. And uh, I went, right, it's time now. And it, it, that's really what made it happen, made it possible to happen, and then happen, uh, possibly. Great, yeah. I was, I was going to ask, there's um, a quote of yours that... Um, that doesn't immediately spring to mind about being sandwiched in between two. Oh, st- Iron Eyes, lukewarm water. Uh, that's uh, that's right. That's the one. That's yeah. the one. Thank you yeah. for. Uh, yeah. uh, that's my hatchet job. Sandwich in. Oh, it was it, so. R- w- what was the hatchet job? I'm sorry. That film. Oh, the film. Yeah. Right. Yeah, made us look like prat. Really? Do you? I mean, like, do, do you well, th- I mean, do you think this? This way, David. David. We, we were on a cross-country American tour. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you think it's likely that almost every night we found our way to the stage, no problem? Yeah, I w- I would, yeah, okay. That, that, that's that's fair fair to say that you that's might... a bit of a slant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. A bit of an agenda, I'd say. With the stage props and the and the writer oh, and... That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's just pick out the, the parts of this experience which make the band look at, it, at, at their absolute worst yeah okay well i can i can uh, absolutely i can understand that now i mean i play in a band myself and i what do you play 
I I play uh, I play electric guitar. Great. Yeah. So the one with the little strings. The one with the littler strings, but a couple more of them. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I picked up one once early in life and thought that these are these are these are finger torturers. These strings. Well, I was going to ask you because. You know, around the time you would have picked up guitar, like I mean, who were the heroes, like Hank Marvin or or Eddie Cochran or Buddy Holly? Like, well, I wasn't a guitar. I, I wasn't a guitar fan. I was I was just hanging about with some mates at the London School of Design, and uh, they they were bashing away at guitar, and I said, I'll, I'll make a crack at that. They, one night they were drunk. Derek, you play it. Yeah. And uh, just thought, well, I'm going to shred my fingers doing this. Yeah. But there was a little uh, Japanese bass, uh, three quarter electric bass, not a balsa wood or something cheap. And I picked that up and went, whoa, yeah, I like these string strings, nice, nice big sound. You know, it wasn't out of emulation as so much as personal experience. Uh, great, okay. If you don't mind, I just wanted to ask you just about a couple of tunes on your record. Um, great. Uh, she puts the bitch in obituary. It's uh, it's well, it's, it's quite a quite a confronting tune. Is the uh, li- lyrical content stuff you've gleaned from personal experience or from, ripped from real life? Right. Ten tendrils still bleeding. Wow. For a fact, the woman who sings uh, background vocals on that track, the woman the song is about, and she went into a bit of a of a freak out at the end of the recording, and we decided. Oh, so that, that that's an act, that's actually like a field recording of, of the thing of the thing we're singing about. Yeah, bloody hell! Right, the thing itself, and in, 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 and we had a bit of a discussion, the producer and I, about whether we leave that on or, or take it off. Yeah, and I thought, you know, here's the thing: it's evidence in case she decides to come after me. Ah, uh, okay. Make it's evidence; it's right there. Of course. So, it's 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 a document, mentally, but it is a document. Yeah, well, that shows incredible foresight to, uh, you know, whilst... Well, I've, 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 I've been there before, mate. I've yeah. I've been there before. The uh, female persuasion. Right. Uh, that's where my first Lamborghini went. Uh, how, and how, how was that? It was just, you know, a, a court proceeding. Okay. A lovely a lovely court proceeding. Bloody hell. But she, she, she just came after it and uh, got it. So I, I, I've had a bit of experience with the old, you know, the old Cindy's. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but um, well, it's all right. I got, uh, you know, I got mine back on that track. The only revenge song on the record. W- right, it's. No, um, I'll, I'll, I'll take that back. Uh, Faith no more. No, two revenge songs. Two revenge songs. Okay, great. I think that's, that's enough. They might be revenge songs, but they might, you know, that there's something for for all of us to to take from it, I guess. We've all been there. Yeah. We've all been there. We've all been to this maze and we just went, I, how did how did this happen? No, I fancied it. I know I fancied it once, but this? And then as far as, uh, you know, Faith No More is about something I think everyone's experienced in life, unfortunately, which is betrayal of trust. Uh, you look back and you say, how could I, how could we have been so stupid for 17 years to believe this bloke? Yeah. Uh, to, to the point of believing that he died when it turned out he'd faked his own death uh, just to escape some obligations that he had to us. And so, if, uh, if you don't mind me asking, is that uh, who uh, who might that? I mean, it's Ian it's Frank, none of my business. Manager. Oh, Ian, you, Ian, right? Okay. That's, uh, that's the name. Of, that's why the song is called Faith No More. Ah, I s- rough. I'm sorry. I um. It I was, is early there, isn't it? It is. Okay, I'm going to have to listen to that with a fresh perspective. Oh, now, yeah. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Now that you know that, it's, it's again, it's it's a document, uh, yeah. which is why we treated it with, with orchestral pomp. Of course. Uh, because it, 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 it might as well be submitted in a, in a court uh, yeah. proceeding. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about, it's not to, so much directly a question about the song, but Memo to Willie, you've got Donald Fagan from Steely Dan, guesting on that yes. tune with you. Now, I yes. think uh, Steely Dan, like yourself, are key proponents of incorporating elements of jazz into rock and roll music. Mm-hmm. And I want to ask you, how important is it to keep broadening 
well, sometimes I guess they're narrow stylistic parameters of, of heavy rock music. Well, I think that's what I was trying to do on this record was bring other other parts of my musical personality to the fore, mm. you know, so that you've got uh, uh, something that's uh, almost uh, a a a a a a, 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 a piece of, of chamber music in Hell to Pay. Yeah. You know, there's no... Ah, oh, it is, front, yeah. There's no bass, there's no guitars. It's just almost as if you, you walked into, uh, you know, the playing uh, Bach or something. Yeah. Like into this. Ominous um, kind of fugue. Yeah, yeah, playing, yeah. yeah. At night, not on bald mountain sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And then, uh, you know, there's, there's the other pieces like uh, when men did rock that are are almost um, the grandiosity almost overwhelms you the orchestral grandiosity in in paying tribute to just you know four strings to two or three chords um, uh, yeah it's it's almost ironic in the way that the two things face off against each other oh um, yeah trying to yeah. play trying to have different kinds of music in form bring bring them into the uh, hard heavy rock sphere. And uh, bash them about a bit. Yeah. Bash about a bit with them. Yeah. It's, it, there, there is no jazz on this record. No. Uh, we did. We finally recorded Jazz Odyssey on the last Chap record. That Back from exhausting. the Dead. Yeah. Yes, and that was exhausting. So uh, gave yeah. it, you know that was a an excursion into jazz, as we called it. Yeah. As I called it. Well, I was the only one that liked it. Um, but uh, I've, I've followed that up with an incursion uh, into jazz called Jazz Iliad, which hopefully we'll be doing uh, at the live shows. Oh, right, okay. Because I was going to ask you, I mean, there's there's obviously this um, orchestral bombast to the record, and mm -hmm. having seen that you're touring the States with symphony orchestras, did you incorporate orchestral work into the record like with a, with a foresight to touring in, in that kind of configuration, or...? Uh, that's a good question. Which came first, the orchestral chicken or the orchestral egg? Egg, yeah. Um, I would say uh, the egg. Right. Which being the... Oh, I don't know. About, uh, I, I forgot which one that was. Right. Um, that's all right. Uh, that's okay. I, I, I started writing songs before the symphonic approach uh, back in... Uh, yeah. And then as soon as it did, it, that led me to write, uh, you know, grander pieces, I think. Uh, six of one out the other. Yeah. This is like a, a question that's of, um, basically for like my own personal interest. When you joined TAP, it would have been, uh, no, was it 1967, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, around oh, the... Around the two, Flower People, uh, Rainy Day Sun is another song that is... Yeah. I'm a massive fan of psychedelic and freak beat music. And I was wondering if you ever had any run-ins with, like, with Sid Barrett or did you ever tour with bands like The Move or The Dukes of Stratosphere, for example? Like, did you... Did you... Uh, uh, you know, would run into them in clubs. Yeah. Um, would trade substances on occasion. Never toured with them. Yep. Um, we we aspired to. I was one reason we changed our musical direction is because we, we uh, got a bit of a resounding thanks, fellas, all the same from the psychedelic world, and thought that. And and I think it was David who said this can't last. Right. Uh, and and pointed in the in the direction that we went next. Yeah. Uh, so. It was uh, it was a good thing. Uh, I don't think you see a lot of psychedelic bands around now uh, plying their wares on the unsuspecting public. Probably a good good move on our part. It was fun music to play, but it didn't have the uh, staying power of just hard crunchy rock. Well, that's the thing. You know, around the middle of 1968, the kind of like bands seemed to shed the multicolored kaleidoscopic thing and lean towards kind of like, like basic boogie rock is that yeah and primary colors primary exactly primary well, colors in the music as well as the wardrobe i think it was 
the turn from the fussy toward the basic. We, you couldn't really, if you heard us play live back then, you couldn't get more basic. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost out of time, but I just wanted to ask you one more question, if that's all right. Sure. Sure. Um, Please. I play guitar in a in a group called UMI, and we uh, we're going out on tour. You're in that group. I, I'm in UMI. Yeah. Oh well, you, I know what you're doing. You're, you're doing a tap tour. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We. Uh, that, that's so great. That is great. Oh, we appreciate that. Thanks, Derek. We're very moved by that. And I say we, I mean me, because I don't talk to the others. Right. That's well, wonderful. Well, I will pass definitely pass on to the lads that you. Please do. Please do. Who, who's uh, and and you're doing all? Uh, are you doing any songs from? I'll break like the wind. Uh, we're playing Majesty of Rock. We're playing. Right. Um, right. We're doing a little uh, psychedelic bracket where we play um, Rainy Day Sun, Listen to the Flower right. People, Cups and Cakes, and kind of st- skiffly section where we play All the Way Home and um, the original arrangement of Give Me Some Money. And um, right. Right. Co- like, yeah, Rock and Roll Nightmares in there. Um, oh, great. Uh, what a warmer than hell's in there. <laughs> yeah, well, it's more top. It's more topical than ever, mate. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, are you changing the geographical names to suit Australia? Are just doing it? No. I've, why? Why mess with something that's been perfected already? Is is my. That's a, that's a great motto. Yeah. It's a great motto. Yeah. I'm, I'm always. A, I was always a fan of of Nigel's. Uh, I, I can't remember the name of the uh, from Brett like, the, the song about being out in the desert. Uh, ah, um. Oh, um, yeah, it's, it's Clam Caravan. It's so much fun to play. Clam Caravan, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but basically, I just wanted to ask you if there was any, and this is a broad question that I hate being asked myself. When gonna, I had to ask you as a. As a closing question, is that, you know, we are going out on tour playing the songs of your former band. I was just wondering if there was any wisdom or advice you could impart to help us, like, just get inside, like, inhabit the songs. Yeah, two things. Uh, it's not so much about the songs, it's about... Well, one is, uh, just bloody well turn it up. Don't be afraid to turn it up. Um, yeah. These songs really must... Uh, overwhelm the listener yeah be any good uh, and two and and this is from hard experience yep. uh, of many years uh, get the money before the gig ah uh, okay you'll play you'll, you'll play happier Chuck Berry style get the uh, get the yeah you, you, there's always a bit of a, of a smile on Chuck's face uh, yes <laughs> Because yeah. he knew he already had the cash. Of course. Yeah, and it, 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 I guess it, it didn't... It puts a little extra, uh, a, a little extra gasoline, uh, uh, petrol, as we say, yeah. in the uh, engine yeah. the tank. It puts a little extra uh, um, puissance in the trouser department. It, yeah. It, it, we've got the cash, let's go. Fantastic. I guess that's the thing about Chuck. He didn't really give a shit who was backing him up. He kind of... He had the, ca- he had the cash for He had the cash. It's up here. All right, let's, right, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's a, it, it, you know, that's the rock and roll spirit, isn't it, really? It's that... It's that fussy, this fussy kind of perfectionism is, is for, uh, I don't know, Neil Diamond or something. But, uh, yeah. You know, it's just get the cash and bash. Well, get the cash and bash, I think, is something to, uh, to uh, bear in mind and also pass on to the rest of the group. Yeah, maybe um, get T-shirts with it, with it saying on, uh, so you you impress upon them the importance I, of it. I absolutely will, Derek. Um, well, uh, good luck with it. Um, I, I hope it, it, it goes well. Well, we'll, we'll yeah, are you going to record it anyway? Uh, well, we're, we'll we weren't planning to, but like, nowadays everything's on YouTube anyway. So like, yeah, yeah. So, so some punter will do it for you. I think so. Yeah. So we'll. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to it if I get to hear it. Great to talk to you, and I, I hope that uh, we can bring the uh, tour down there. And you could. Uh, well, in. yeah. If you need a rock band 
backing you up. You know, um, you know some guys who are familiar with the with your oeuvre and um, and the material, and would be most happy to do it. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you, Davy. Excellent. <coughs> Thanks for your time, Derek. My pleasure. And I will uh, see you soon. Mark. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, see you sometime soon. Thanks so much. Right. Cheers. Okay. Bye bye.